Hey guys, my name is Dave, and welcome to another episode of Talking About the Seven Deadly Sins. Today we're going to be talking about, well, KCAU, for some reason skipped over the title and just checked this video out, just because the most devious of all the sins, in my opinion, Envy. Now the reason I say the most devious is just because it's the most hateful. Not It's not the one that bind, that binds all the sins. That one will be discussed last. The last one of the sins and next time. However, today I'm going to be talking about Envy. And this one time I can give off many uh, experience on that one. Even I personally have gone through that sin multiple times. Whether it's towards an individual or towards, believe it or not, an inanimate object. Or at least I take it out on an inanimate object. So the thing about Envy that's very interesting, I mean, it one of the best terms to describe it, well, is hate. I mean, that is literally one of the synonyms to the word itself. Now, Envy, it usually comes out of jealousy. That's the thing. It's hate out of jealousy. And the thing about Envy is that it's in everyone. Whether buried in the depths of a person, like me, for the most part, or just upfront obvious. It really depends. For me, a good example of envy would be when I, in my past, I have gone through several relationships, and I've talked about this on the channel before. Um, but one of the things that is, that, that, that crosses my mind every time when I'm single and I see other individuals I'm like oh, lucky I mean that's where my upfront goes but if you dug deep down to my core I guarantee the envy would be acted on and it wouldn't be pretty but well one thing that I've noticed that helps prevent the action of envy I guess you could say is restraint which I will admit if you go back far enough Timeline-wise, I did not have as much as I do now. However, it's it's a good attribute to have to prevent too much of this kind of thing. Too much jealousy. Um, you learn to accept things, and kind of like how pretty much me, um, Aaron, Amber, all, all the crew, all of us pretty much have that kind of restraint, which prevents us from showing too much envy on anything. In fact, Aaron has so much of it that he's got one of the most, uh, one of the jobs on the, one of the biggest jobs on the planet where you need the most restraint and the most patience. That's how you can tell he has, like, a large amount of restraint, and it kind of explains why he has, like, literally, he, he if Envy ever appears in him, it's gonna be, like, in some kind of alternate universe. <laughs> I, I think that's a pretty a decent example of wha like what Envy can be. And for those who are wondering, Aaron is a programmer. Yes, he does DoorDash, or he do like for some people might think Uber Eats and don't know what DoorDash is. If you don't, that's fine. It's basically the same thing. But anyway, he does DoorDash, and that amount of restraint helps him get through it. It's kind of the concept of it, 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 restraint helps not just with envy, but with last episode's uh, sin as well, wrath. Because um, these two kind of bind together to a degree. Wrath usually comes out of envy. Envy provokes wrath. So both are two and two in a, in a way, but envy is the action that makes it a lot worse than if you... Like, wrath is the hate part of it, and envy is the jealousy, but envy also kind of is partially hate. It's a really... Those two are really confusing and were really hard to actually look into for me. Um, for any of us, but... One way or the other. I think envy... To look from a different angle, envy is kind of a point... Like, a perspective kind of thing, too. It's one of those sins that can be overlooked, because it's also one of those things where... You look at it from one angle, it looks like envy, but you look at it from another angle, and it's not. I mean, perspective can give, like, can release a lot of different sins. But in my opinion, 
Now, this is a personal opinion thing, but Envy is probably one of the very fair few. Th it, it's the one that can be released of or kind of eased out of the easiest, just due to the fact that if you're looking at it from a different angle, you won't realize you're going through it. A good example of this is the stereotype for many... Now, bear in mind, I'm saying the word stereotype, which means for probably most... I can't confirm or deny this, but for, I would assume for most of these particular this particular category, it's not true. But one that, one stereotype I hear of a lot that kind of reflects envy would be the job of a lawyer, or to be more exact, a prosecutor. Now, the reason I say this is because the actions of a prosecutor in the part in this stereotype. Again, I'm going. I can't emphasize this on enough, but I'm saying stereotype for a very dead ass reason. I'm pretty sure it's this doesn't apply to every every individual that's that works like this. In fact, I'm pretty sure a lot of them do it as the job describes and doesn't do what I'm about to list. Anyway, I digress. Um, the stereotype goes that a prosecutor will forge evidence or fake certain things just to make sure they win. That they always have to win. Of course, I've met many people who have claimed this isn't true for the ones that they come across. That's why I emphasize so much on what I did. But the stereotype itself provides an idea of what envy can cause. In fact, most people who are in the mindset of I must win get very, very, usually count cores from jealousy or envy outside of the fact that they used to always be on the opposite side of the spectrum. They get so jealous of the fact that they never got to that point, but by the time they did, they would get attached to it. That's kind of the core concept of envy. And for the stereotype of a uh, prosecutor, that kind of thing is showcased. Um, uh, a prosecutor wins and it feels good to them because it's it's i mean i wouldn't be surprised if it goes both ways for prosecutor or defense attorney because it could be hard either way around i mean and this is from what i've heard and from what i've seen like on shows that kind of emphasize on reality not reality tv shows where some of the things you look at it and you go yeah that's not real I, for heaven's sake, I, I follow some channels on this platform that have 100% to do with law. Um, for example, Hoag Law. H-O-E-G space law. Um, I don't know. For some reason, I, in, in the past few years, I found interest in that kind of stuff. But regardless, I think that just these stereoty this stereotype of it, those who actually abide by that stereotype... You grab one, and you just want more of it, and you, if you, you will not lose. For those who don't understand what I'm trying to explain, I'm going to revert to a visual novel slash video game. You can choose one or the other. It's It works either way around, called Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. The main protagonist of the entirety of the story was a prosecutor who forged evidence, murdered individuals, and did so much more just for the sake of him always winning. A 51-year win streak for the guy. But that's because, again, he kept forging evidence. Um, and, I mean, in the end, he ended up going to prison for the rest of his freaking life. But 51 years of always needing to win and doing drastic, illegal measures to do it, that pretty much describes envy on the dot. <laughs> because, again, envy cores from jealousy. It The only way things like that would ever happen, like, let's stray away from a prosecutor or a defense attorney and go towards a different job type. Just to so it doesn't feel like I'm shooting an arrow at a very specific group of people. Um, actually, you know what? Gamers. Since I'm a gamer, I can be guilty of this. I'm going to go towards the game Mortal Kombat. Let's see, is it over here right now? I believe it's that little doozy right there. Yeah. <laughs> Mortal Kombat is one of those games where, especially the original one here, 
it feels really good to win because it is hard as hell to do so <laughs> sometimes. Unless you're sadistic or you love extremely difficult stuff and you're able to easily get through that stuff like that. In that case, it's not hard. But for a gamer like myself who's really bad at those kind of things for the most part, it's satisfying to be able to get through something like that. Mortal Kombat 11, though. 10 and 11 are a completely different story. They're much easier. Um, they give you the option to go off of a much easier flow, and it has multiplayer. That multiplayer aspect is where I'm leaning towards. I own Mortal Kombat 11, and I've gone up against Aaron with it before. He kicks my ass over and over and over and over again. Pardon the language. I usually don't swear on these particular live videos because I know a lot of people more like watching these than the others, but I'm used to it by now, I guess. Anyway, um, I guess because of this factor, I win one, and I'm like... The envy comes out. I'm not going to lie. Jealousy comes out. I'm like, finally! But why do you win so much? <laughs> kind of thing. That's like the furthest I go. But if I was any darker than I actually am, I guarantee... That? This? It would be broken. It wouldn't exist. It, it would be shattered. <laughs> but actually, now that I claim it, that's a fair statement to make. You see that? That came from that kind of and like kind of frustration, but it was a long time ago. I've owned that controller for as long as the PlayStation 4 has been out. I think it was before I learned to contain it, I guess, or to control it, not contain. No. Envy is like an animal. Actually, that's another factor that I could point out about this one. Envy is very much like an animal. Uh, you contain it, it'll explode. It'll be worse. But if you learn to control it, that's a different story. I don't look at contain and control as the same thing. It has to be personal control. Outward control is containing. Control, control, personal control, that's when you look at the situation and go, okay, here's the problem, what's a way I can resolve it? And take that path. It prevents envy, it prevents wrath, it prevents almost every single one of the seven deadly sins, quite frankly. I don't know. It's an interesting factor to think on. What do you guys think? I figured I might as well throw a couple of uh, very heavily known examples of this kind of thing in there just to give an idea of why MV can be a big deal, but how it's easily prevented as well. I don't know. What do you guys think? Did I miss anything when I was talking about it? Let me know in the comments below. Um, unfortunately, I don't have Amber or Aaron here to help out with this kind of stuff right now. Aaron, right as of this recording, Aaron is probably actually door dashing or coding right now. <laughs> the amount of patience he has blows my mind. I'm not going to lie. That's where envy comes on my end. It's more of a joking manner because I get it. I've learned to, I mean, acceptance. That's I think, the one thing that kind of throws it into it, it, keeping it at its best. But one way or the other, yeah. Just let me know in the comments below if I missed anything. Um, want to check out any other of the seven deadly sins that has been talked about on this channel, click the link on the side of my head where there will be a playlist giving you pretty much all of it. Or if that's not floating your boat, if you didn't quite think this particular topic was what you were looking for, this isn't something you were looking for particularly, just click the link on the side where YouTube will give you an idea of what you can check out. In the meantime, I'm going to head off. Thanks for tuning in to this uh, second to final episode of the Seven Deadly Sins series, guys. And no, again, not the anime. Uh, but we hope to catch you guys in another video. Bye for now.